So this is um, so channeling, what's not channeling class seven? I think so. Okay, for 1988. But so we haven't had many in 87. We had 14. 14 in 87. Okay. Tonight's class, the writing is, uh, title is humility. I always write uh, something to get tuned in to the teacher and then uh, go on the channel. And he said, humility is the ingredient of divine love that opens the door to freedom. Pride is the opposite of humility. Those who are proud are letting the little self take the credit. What binds man to the lower levels is thinking that he, the personality, the physical self, can do it. True humility is giving credit where credit is due. Someone once said that you would be unable to lift your little finger without the power of God. God loves us with a love so great that the whole universe cannot contain it. This is why the universe is continually expanding to make a larger consciousness of God's love for his creation. As you learn to give God the credit and be grateful for everything in your life, then you are tapping the source, God, the substance of all that is. God is life, and life is God everywhere present. We turn the, dim the lights and set the scene. Good evening, dear ones. This is Gadon speaking to you from these levels of love and light. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you this evening and to have these new ones in our midst. It is such a wonderful, wonderful feeling to make contact with you on the physical plane. And there are many here tonight who are not in the physical body. There are many of you who have, all of you have your teachers, some of your teachers and guides with you. But there are many here who sit in on this class because they did not have opportunity in the physical to have something like this. And they come to learn as you are learning. As you lift your consciousness above the physical plane into the realms of love and light, it is very important to attain the consciousness of humility. Humility is one, or should I say pride, is one of the things that holds man, binds man to the physical plane as much as anything else. When man with his physical self and his personality thinking there is nothing else in life but this 2% level of the physical plane thinks that he is doing everything and that he is the source of what he does. He is incorrect. He is the source but when he thinks the personality in the physical self is the source, he is incorrect. But each of you are the source because each of you are God. Each of you are life, and life is you. Not just part of life, but all of life. And I would have you know that as you humble yourself to give the credit where credit is due, to allow yourself to realize that the God within you is the life force that you are, and by giving the credit to the God within you, then you open the door for so much more to flow into your life. I do not mean to be pious or to uh, think of yourself as religious in the sense of religion, but think of think and know that you are a spiritual being, not a physical being. You are wearing a physical body and you have a mind that is like a computer, but you are not your mind and you are not your physical body. You are spirit. You are consciousness. 
that's one with the overall consciousness of all life that has named itself God. And as you understand this and realize it, as you move into the consciousness and awareness of your spirituality, of your oneness with all life and oneness with God, then you can make God a personal friend. You can open the door of your mind and your thoughts and talk to God all through the day. And when you have something that happens to you that is good, say, thank you, Father, for this beautiful thing that has happened. Thank you, Father, for this life and this incarnation. Thank you for all the opportunities in this incarnation, even though they may seem to be troubling problems. I know that they are opportunities, and I can either make them tripping stones or stepping stones. Dear ones, choose to make them stepping stones and be grateful for everything, everything that happens in your life. No matter if it seems to be good or bad, there is no good or bad in true reality. There is just experience. And as you raise your consciousness to this level where you understand that life is, you are, I am, God is. When you understand this and realize that things are good or bad just because you put a label on them and say that they are, and then, of course, to you they are because you have built this into your consciousness. But you need not build these things into your consciousness. You can rise above the concept of duality and illusion on this physical plane. You can know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth that is eternal. The truth that is God. And the truth that is you, that is God. It is a beautiful day in your city today. And you have had opportunities this past week. And... How have you handled these opportunities? Have you been upset, emotionally disturbed in a negative way? Or have you been grateful for your opportunities? Think on this. And this next week, when you go through your week, try to think of every experience as an opportunity. Everything that comes into your life, every one, even if... The, they seem to irritate you. Say, thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Thank you, Father, that I know that your love can flow through me to this individual and to this situation, and it matters not what they think or don't think or do or don't do, but it matters that I know the truth and the truth that you are the life force that I am. When you can have this kind of attitude, when you can move through your day in this beautiful song of gratitude, then your vibrations are making a beautiful music, a beautiful song, a beautiful tune that is in tune with the higher dimensions of life. And as you learn to keep your vibrations in this higher level, then you draw on these higher planes of love and light, and you bring them into your consciousness, you bring them into your mind, and you bring them into your physical life. You need not struggle with life. Life need not be a struggle. It is only a struggle because you have been conditioned to think that it should be a struggle. When you relax and let go and let God guide you or your higher self, whatever you want to call it, your intuition, when you allow this higher power to flow through you into your conscious awareness and lead you, then everything does fall into place in a beautiful way. But when you run ahead and try to run the show with your little consciousness of your, your physical self, your persona, 
your personality, then you see, my dear ones, you are not allowing your best good to come forth. You are hindering yourself. You are allowing your little self to take charge and the repercussions will come back to you. Are there questions in the group tonight that you would ask? Where, yeah, where would one draw the line between confidence and, and pride as far as, could you help me out there? Yes. Pride is taking credit with the little self, letting the little self, the persona, take the credit. Confidence is knowing that you are an eternal being, that you cannot be destroyed, that you have come from eternity that had no beginning and will have no end, and that nothing can come nigh you to harm you unless you open the door. And when you have confidence in your higher self and God working through your higher self to manifest in your life, then, my dear ones, that is what you have confidence in, not the personality, not the physical self, but the God within, the pure life force that comes from the higher dimensions. Does this answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Are there other questions that you would ask? It is a beautiful experience to make contact with you and to see your auras changing and to see the dear ones in, as you would call, in the invisible that are here tonight listening because they did not have the opportunity to, or did not take the opportunity to have something like this. But you see, when they get here and go through the experience that you call death, that we call graduation, when they get to this plane, whatever plane they are manifesting on, and discover that the physical is less than 2% of life and that the inner is the true reality of life, that the outer is just a reflection of the inner reality of life, then they are eager to learn. They are open, some of them, not all of them, but those who are open, they are given every opportunity to sit in on groups like this and we have classes on this side of life as well. And let me say this to you. Some of you know this, but I would like to say it to, for some who may not know it. When your body goes to sleep, as you call it, you leave your body and you are manifesting on these other dimensions and you are learning there are times when you go to class on these dimensions while your body rests from the entity that you are, and you learn. Now, most of you do not bring back the understanding that you learn in conscious awareness, but you do bring it back in your consciousness. And if you are striving to move higher in consciousness, to grow spiritually, then it comes through on an unconscious level and you just know something that you had not known before and you're not sure maybe where it came from, but I tell you it came from the inner part of you that comes to these dimensions at night and learn. And another thing is that you have been one with God at all times, as you call it. Time does not exist for us on these dimensions, but you have always been one with God. And you have been in the Godhead many times and have known the allness of life as God knows it. And you can also pull on this understanding bringing it down into your conscious awareness, into your everyday life, and letting God's love and light go ahead of you into your day, into your every thought, word, and deed, and shine its light on your path so that you will move as a spiritual entity on this realm of illusion. You need not be caught up in the 
illusions of this realm, you can know the truth and move through your day with light shining all around you and light shining uh, before you with love in your heart and gratitude all the day long and a song of gratitude singing through your whole being. It is a beautiful, beautiful experience to let the music of gratitude and love ripple through your whole being. And as you move higher in consciousness, you will be able to hear this music. You will be able to feel it. And you will know without any doubt that you are God and that God is you, that you are life and that life is you. Are there other questions that you would ask tonight? As you open up to ask questions, not necessarily here, but to ask yourself questions. When you are going through your day and you have a, a puzzlement or things are not going as you would like them to go, uh, you are not feeling up to par as the saying goes, or someone is irritating you. You have the ability, my dear ones, to ask yourself, open your mind and let your higher self come down into your conscious awareness and give you the answers. And I tell you, this is the answer. Divine love is always the answer. When you allow yourself to love yourself as God, because you are God, many of you have been conditioned that this is sacrilegious, but I tell you it is not. It is knowing the truth. And as you love yourself, then it is much easier to love others around you and to allow them to make mistakes, even when it's directed toward you, and to be at peace about it. You see, my dear ones, when you do this, then you are the master. You are in charge of your thoughts, your mind, and your emotions. You are ch in charge of your life, and you do not let the negativity of the world or anyone else come in to disrupt the harmony and the beauty that goes on within you as you know the truth about yourself. Life is ever expanding and bursting into more of itself. My dear ones, you are life. And as you learn the truth, as you learn to incorporate the truth into your consciousness and bring it down into your physical life, then you are bursting and expanding and you are going with the flow, as you would say. You are allowing the life force and you're allowing God to manifest through you in all of his glory and all of his beauty. And when someone comes to you and they feel this shining beauty glowing all around you, they know that you're different, that you have something that they do not have. And they will want to seek your company and they may reach out and ask you how you feel. What do you think about this? Or what, how do you feel about that? And as you do, you see then you are a channel that life is working through, that God is working through. Each one of you, as I have told you in other lessons, are a channel that life is manifesting through. And you can manifest it in a grumpy, grouchy, negative way, or you can manifest it in a beautiful, harmonious, glorious way that affects everything and everyone around you. There are questions here tonight in your minds. Would you care to ask them? I see that you have a message for Don Weldon, and now that Don Weldon's consciousness has been put aside, can you bring through a special message for him? Yes, Don Weldon has learned to be an open channel, and he has learned many things, but he has yet a ways to go. And you know him personally much more than these other individuals do, and you do understand uh, the message for him. And I think it would be more appropriate that you 
give this message to him than having it said in the class. But he is learning and growing and expanding and arising above much, much more than many of you know. He is working against things that many of you do not know, but you, my dear one, do know. And so allow the higher self, the God within you, answer this for him, for he is growing. He falters at times, and he thinks of giving up, but he is not giving up. He knows his place, and he is moving forward and allowing the life force of God to manifest in his life. Does this answer your question, my dear one? Yes, but he must ask me. Yes. Unable to help unless he will ask. That's correct. And you should never push anything onto anyone unless they do ask, because that is interfering with their life. And even if you know that someone is making a mistake, it is not your place to tell them unless it is one of your children that you are responsible for or some individual that you have taken responsibility for that may be ill, unless that, then you are interfering with God's plan for a life. For, you see, no one learns by someone telling them. They may take what is said and then learn from it, but they only learn when they listen themselves to their inner self to the God within them, to the life force that flows through them. And you cannot tell other people what to do because even if you know from your higher self, it is not your place to push this onto them. It is for them to work this out in their life with their own understanding that comes from within. And as they move through life, maybe they bump up against many brick walls and they hurt themselves at times and they have to do this over and over at times that they will learn and the life force within them is God and everyone, not just a few, my dear ones, but everyone will open up to the light of love that is the true source of their being are there other questions that you would ask? I would speak again of humility, and I would say to you that this is one thing that is misunderstood much of the time. So much people, many of the people think that humility is meekness and groveling, and this is not true. Humility is knowing the truth about yourself, knowing that you are God, that you are one with life, and life is one with you, all of life. Humility is understanding your Godhood and raising your consciousness to it. As you learn to incorporate true humility into your life, this opens many, many doors that have been closed to you before. When you allow the little self to take charge and run your life, then you have turbulence. And you need not have this turbulence if you can give up the little self control and set it aside and get it in its place and allow the God self within you to take over and run the show. You see, you have been programmed and conditioned in many ways for many lifetimes, and you need to rise above this illusionary negative conditioning and see and know the truth about yourself. Allow the wisdom of the ages to flow through you, for it is there within you. You do not have to go out someplace to seek it or find it in a book. Although sometimes 
when you read things in a book, this sparks the understanding within you and brings out a greater knowing. But humility is bowing before God and recognizing His power that is your power, His love that is your love, His beauty that is your beauty. And when you do this, then you become a beautiful spiritual being that you are. You already are this beautiful spiritual being. But when you allow humility to take first place in your life, then you are allowing it to manifest through you the spiritual entity that you are. Otherwise, you are allowing the little self, the conscious physical self, to run the show and to make you very uncomfortable at times and very upset. Are there other questions that you would ask this evening? There are questions, and when you ask a question, it is much more appropriate for me to go into details and to help you to understand more clearly. It is easier when you bring forth the question. This opens a door. It brings light into the circle, and it opens the way for me to help you to understand in a greater way. I have a question. Um, what is the best way to help someone that is going through a very, very difficult time? I have a, a friend who is paralyzed from the neck down right now, and this just happened uh, to a very thorough man, a very athletic man. And it's very hard to know what to do or what to say to someone like this. Yes, it is <coughs> not your place to push anything onto him or to try to uh, lead him into your understanding. But my dear one, you know how to send love, God's love. And this is one of the best ways to help others without interfering with their life. When you go to sleep at night, you may ask that God's love flow through you to this entity and make the connection with him on other dimensions and take him to classes and help him to understand. This is difficult, you see, because so many think that they are the physical body. And when they lose some control over their physical body, then they think that they have lost control of their life. And this is not true, because his mind is still clear, is it not? Is it not? Yes, it is. And he has the ability to think. He has just lost the ability to move his body around. And he is not his body. And as you can open up to talk with him at night, whether it is when you are asleep or not, you may ask your higher self if it is all right to speak to him while he sleeps. This will go into his subconscious mind, and if he is open for it, he will gain the understanding from it. You can think about the times when he is asleep and talk to him, and you need not be even near him at all. Just speak to his heart and to his soul and help him to understand that he is not the body, he is not his mind, he is spirit, he is eternal, and that this is a great opportunity for him to learn that he is spirit, that he is eternal. You see, my dear ones, as I look at this individual, I see the reason for this happening to him is to give him the opportunity for soul's growth. And if his heart is open, if he will open to the truth, then he will gain much in the rest of his life. His little self feels bad about this, but his higher self knows the truth. And when you speak, speak to his higher self, but ask that the doors open up to come down into his conscious awareness and send love to him often through the day and send light of understanding into his mind 
and talk to him about gratitude, about being grateful for everything in his life, even this thing that has happened to him. You see, we are away at school on this plane. It is not, we did not come here to be comfortable or to get rich or to be powerful or any other things. We came to learn and to grow and to move higher in consciousness, to let our spirit shine through the many, many bodies of beings that we are. And this is his greatest opportunity in this lifetime to have, to gain the spiritual understanding that his soul needs to move higher in consciousness for his other lives that he may come back into. Do you understand? It, it is not always necessary to talk to him when he is asleep, but it, you can talk to him through the day, but not to him personally. When you are in your home and he is in his home, see his face before you and talk to him in a loving way and tell him that this is for his best good and that God loves him and that life is growing and expanding in his consciousness. And this is a great opportunity for him. You can be an instrument to bring about the consciousness within him so that he will gain from this experience. This is something I can also do while I'm sleeping. While you're sleeping, yes. Release yourself to not at night to God and ask that you have the opportunity to speak to him while he is on the other dimensions and while you are on the other dimensions. Do you understand? Yeah. Are there other questions that you would ask? Life is continually flowing through you, no matter what you think and no matter what you do, no matter what is going on in your outer physical experience. Life, God is giving life to you, life force flowing through you, just as the electricity is flowing into this house. It is flowing through you continually. And what you do with this life force is of great importance. If you take advantage of this incarnation and the things that happen to you in this incarnation and allow the higher self to come down into your conscious awareness, and manifest the glory of God through you, then when you go back home at the end of this incarnation, you will find that you have grown, that you have gained, and you will be grateful. So many who leave this plane through the experience that you call death and find that they did not accomplish what they wanted to when they came into this life, go through a rough time and are in darkness for a while until they get over their self-pity and self-condemnation and allow the entities here to help them to understand the truth. You are a beautiful bunch tonight. There is much energy in this circle this evening. There is much love. There is much understanding. And I would have you to take this love and this understanding into this week and allow it to go with you through the day. Remember that you are never alone, and if you draw upon the powers that is around you, if you draw upon the understanding and the love that is around you, then it makes your life so much easier. It brings beauty into even the, the most mundane things of life. It brings a song into your heart, and it sings through, ripples through your being as a beautiful melody. Allow this to happen, my dear ones. Be in tune with yourself. Be in tune with the God within you. And let your life force be a beautiful melody as you move through your days. It has been a great privilege to speak with you, and I am with you always, as your teachers and your guides are with you always in consciousness. If you need help, all you need do is ask, but you must be open then to receive. God bless you, and good night. Shall we have our chapu?
old hands. Let us think of ourselves as coming together in the physical as we have been in the spirit and bringing the divine love and light down into this physical circle. And think of this circle as a powerhouse. Think of the column of light going up to the higher dimensions, up, up, up to the highest point of life. And then think of this power being reversed, and this light and love coming down through this circle, going around from the right to the left, gaining momentum as it moves and builds up. And this power, this God's love and light fills this room, spreads out over the city, covers this whole planet. And let us think of an extra abundance of it going into the world leaders tonight going into all the trouble spots, going into all those who are seeking to know the truth of life, but know not where to look or how to find it. Let us think of this love going ahead of us into our we, into our every thought, word, and deed, into every situation, into every encounter. And let us think of ourselves as being an open channel for this divine love and light to flow through without ceasing, constantly, every day, every night. Thank you, Father. Don't turn. Don't. <clears throat> it's the pen store. Yeah, I don't know. So we usually sit and talk a little while if you like, and you know. I have to have you here, friend. Thank you. When you go back on for a stick, longer. To the end of the night, Clinton. You mean here at the night of Poe? Yeah. Sand Point. Call the thing up. Come and put it up. It's for the sea. And we have a new one. Phyllis has joined the money consciousness class. I can only. He decided she wanted to attend this class. Right. Felt the vibrations in my trunk. Yes, I did too. Good feeling. Really? How do people in your own other side mm-hmm. learn and walk? How hell on each other? <laughs> 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 okay. They are brothers and sisters. They're family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know that you have this spiritual family, then you're never alone. And you don't get lonesome or anything. No matter what's happening in your life. And it's good to remember to call upon them, talk to them, because they're there. Even if they're on another planet, they know what you're thinking or saying. Unless they're in a physical incarnation like we are, cut off most of the big part of the time. But their higher self will know anyway then. Did everyone here in other classes also? I mean, Most everyone. You haven't come to any of the classes but this one, have you? Elaine is, has this group <laughs> on the standpoint that's facing the classes by mail. Oh. And they get together every week. Mm-hmm. And the, the five of them. And it's kind of, as the classes go on, it gets stronger, you know, and not as hard to get everybody together. <laughs> They're in their time travel place right, now, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Had, had he gone all, all fine of the true, all the class? Uh-huh. Yeah. And in fact, what's nice about the tape is we have one girl that's pregnant, and she was pretty thick through the first four months of her pregnancy. So she couldn't come to class. We passed the tape on. She listened to the tape, so she kept up with us. And then, mm-hmm. so she's right back in the class now. And, does that mean? Yeah, or somebody misses to do this thing. Mm-hmm. But, be great. Oh, I did that. Sorry, it was pregnant. Tired cow was should take attention. So she didn't get sick though. This one, I don't know. She had no. Well, I think that was uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was even uh, see, daughter was uh, pregnant during the time travel class. I mean, yeah. How old is 
the CDs four months from now. Four months. I think those, I don't know, really, this ties to certain neat on the air, air groups. We, we kind of started out that one. Just got together with some other couples, and one of them, and Barbara and Ann and Kelly, and, uh-huh. and just we just talked. And, mm-hmm. Well, they got me interested in this. They're the ones that. Don wasn't mm-hmm. open to it at all when they first heard <laughs> I really wasn't. Family yeah. came. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. I'm just sitting there trying to just. Being a nice guy, you're not, you know, <laughs> but boy, I really, you really got third. Ain't not working. Ain't more consistent with it than they are now. Yeah. Oh, you can tell. By the way, Saturday is our phenomenon day. Remember that. And don't bring.